Hello, I'm John Clifford. I'm a senior fellow and Agile Practices Lead at Construct Software. And today I want to talk to you about my seven steps to project success. First, let's talk about why software projects struggle. This is the whole reason I came up with my seven steps, so I think it's important to look at. So what are we trying to do? What are we trying to do as a software engineering organization? Well, it's simple. Everybody in the organization has the same job, providing business value to the organization by delivering high quality software on time and within budget. Now, I've used the phrase high quality, which seems pretty amorphous and qualitative, but let me give you a good definition for high quality that you can apply in your organization. High quality simply means that you've satisfied the customer while conforming to both functional and non-functional requirements. Think of high quality as a three-legged stool or a tripod. If any one of those legs is missing, you don't have a high quality product. Unfortunately, across the industry, we're really not doing a good job of delivering high quality software on time and on budget. The Standish Group, through their chaos reports, shows us that on average, about a third of the companies that are delivering software projects deliver those projects on time, on budget, with the desired scope and the desired level of quality, which of course applies that two-thirds of the organizations delivering projects aren't meeting those goals. So they define being successful as meeting all that criteria. A limited successful project, or what they might call a challenge project, is one that is delivered, but it's over budget, it is missing some scope, maybe the quality's not there, it still gets out and delivers some value to the organization, but it's not as good as it could have been. The problem with those challenge projects is that you get a lower return on investment on them. And then about 20% of our projects, 18% actually, are delivered, but they don't actually provide business value to the organization. So all the effort, time, money, resources spent on that project produce no value. And of course, 23% of the projects, according to their, to their information, are canceled before they're actually finished, which means they fail to deliver any value. Now, canceling a project is not necessarily a bad thing if you cancel a project early. It doesn't really hurt a company to run three or four or six months on a project with a few resources working on it and then realize they're going in the wrong direction. What hurts is when you spend five years or ten years and you have hundreds and hundreds of man years on that project and then you cancel it. Now that report I showed you was actually based on data that was devised in 2005. I've looked at the most recent chaos report from the Standish Group that was done a year or so ago, and the numbers really haven't changed significantly in terms of statistics. There might be a 1 or 2% difference on those numbers. And so that's the point. We've known we've had this problem for well more than a decade, but as an industry, we're generally not getting better. There was a study done by McKinsey with Oxford University back in 2012 and found out that large IT projects generally aren't doing any better now than they were doing a decade ago. The Genico Corporation ran a, a survey and found that 75% of project participants lacked confidence that the projects would be successful because of fuzzy business objectives, out-of-sync stakeholders, and excessive rework. KPG ran a survey in New Zealand back in 2010 and found out that 70% of the orgs that they actually talked to had at least one project failure in the last 12 months, and 50% indicated that the project failed to deliver the expected value. And of course, IBM did a survey back in 2008, and they found out that 60% of the customers they talked to had projects that failed to meet the schedule, budget, and quality goals. And it was caused by lack of alignment, uh, corporate culture issues, and lack of senior management support. Of course, I stopped at those because I could only put so many bullet points on the slide, but there are plenty more examples to show us that we're, this is really a problem throughout the industry. So the fundamental problem, I believe, is that all of this comes down to ineffective communications at some level. When it comes to fuzzy requirements or changing scope, this is often caused by the fact that we don't understand what the customer actually wants. When it comes down to bad planning, bad estimation, bad scheduling, it's often caused by the fact that we don't really understand how much work is necessary to deliver what the customer wants. And of course, when we track projects and they seem to be going well for a while, then as we get to the end, they go back into the red and everybody panics, it's because as an organization and as individuals, we really don't understand the nature of commitment, what that really means. And finally, because we generally lack effective project management and tracking practices in many organizations, we don't understand where we are on our project in terms of meeting our commitment. So there are two dimensions of successful projects. First, we have to do the right thing. And second, we have to do the thing right. So doing the right thing simply means that we build what the customer wants and needs. We build a product or solution that delivers the desired benefits by solving customers' problems. Now doing the thing right means that we plan, 
execute, manage, and track effectively and efficiently. If we can do the right thing and we can do the thing right, we're going to have successful projects. If we fail in any one of those two areas, we tend to have limited success or even abject failure. Over the last few decades in this industry, after working in many companies on a variety of projects, from very small ones to very large ones, after being, an, an, uh, after being an active trainer and consultant for the last six years, I begin to realize that there are seven basic steps to project success, and I've written them down so I can share them with you. I find if you do these seven steps, you tend to be successful because it really helps solve those problems on the two dimensions of doing the right thing and doing the thing right. So let's look at these one by one. And of course, we'll delve into these in more detail in, in later seminars. The first one, collaborate with your stakeholders to truly understand the problem they need to solve. Again, if you don't do the right thing, if you don't effectively solve the customer's problem and give them the desired benefit, nothing else matters. The second step, in a domain of high uncertainty, which is the software development domain for most of us, you can't accurately estimate tasks or activities. You can only accurately estimate effort on deliverables. Why is that? Because in our domain, we don't know all the things that have to be done to build the software we want to deliver. So if you rely on a process that requires you to know all these things in detail up front, you're going to invariably fail. So even if I don't know all the things I have to do in terms of activities, I know all the things I have to deliver in terms of deliverables. Step three, make realistic plans based upon those accurate estimates for effort, but make realistic commitments based upon demonstrated performance on your rate of delivery. Step four, true leaders empower teams. They don't micromanage, they don't tell people what to do, they give people direction, and they help them figure it out by removing impediments to success. Step five, speed of delivery of your product beats extended delivery at every level. So focus on delivering the highest value as early as possible. Step six, execution requires focus. Do one thing, do it well, finish what you start. And step seven, seek continuous improvement by obtaining constant feedback on your progress, on the product you're building, on the process that you're building it with, and the people who are working on it, and then act upon that feedback appropriately. Thank you.